Dr. Bill Adams here, and do we have a show for you today. We're going to be talking about the Brits have banned BBL, and then Giselle, and she's uncut, saying that she did not like her breast implants one bit. And we've got a great crew here to discuss the insights and give us the, the real story with these stories. So you got Dr. Jason Posner from Boca Raton, Florida. We've got Dr. Mindy Hawes from Nashville, also known as Nash Vegas. We've got Dr. Rich Restifo from New Haven, Connecticut. And then we've got two Bostonians, Dr. Christine Amori. And last but not least, Dr. Dan Del Vecchio. We call him DDV. We've got some uh, hot stuff to talk about. This first, this first story was uh, just released last week. Apparently the BAPS, which is the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, sent out a strong letter basically telling members that they should refrain from doing BBLs because of the danger and some of the deaths. Uh, so it, it has created, uh, we were actually just in, in Europe and it's had, there's been a lot of discussion about this. DDV, I'm gonna, I want you to lead us off. You can't criticize it, but it's certainly not the reaction that the rest of the world took. Um, rather than ban the procedure entirely, uh, the rest of the world took the position to ban uh, certain aspects of the procedure entirely. So I, I think that it's, it's certainly, it's certainly the safest approach. And until they figure out as a group what they really want to ban, i.e. intramuscular grafting, um, they're just, what will happen is people will just go to Turkey and, and continue to have risky surgery. And I've already heard of mumblings from surgeons in the UK who said they're going to do it anyway, because they're not members of BAP. So I don't know what it accomplishes from a public health perspective, but they'll eventually get to the point that we're at, I think, where they just prohibit fat in the muscle. Yeah, but Dan, you've been integral in you know, learning and the science of this whole topic. And there's a joint task force here that's recommended basically that, that not to put fat in the muscle. So it just seems odd to me that this coming after that, after like a multi-faceted task force put out recommendations that they would just say, well, you just shouldn't do it. What's interesting is it's unprecedented um, in surgery. Like a, a surgical procedure, as far as I know, has not been outlawed at least not in my career. Does anyone know? The Whipple procedure was outlawed in the early 19th century, but... Really? That's not yeah. a cosmetic procedure, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very popular procedure, right? I mean, that's what uh, we've seen that certainly where we live, but certainly through a lot of the educational stuff, like at American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, there's a lot of data. It's one of the fastest growing procedures that that's being done. I mean, there's all this talk about not injecting it into the muscle. I think there should be more attention given to the caliber of the cannula that you're injecting with. And this is, this was, I got this idea from Dan. You know, the pressure that is needed to push a liquid through a tube is proportional to the fourth power of its radius. It's Buscelli's law. So people that are injecting fat through these tiny little cannulas are subjecting the fat to tremendous pressures. And I think that is that is a risk factor that hasn't really been talked about much. You know, and I, I have to agree. I think ASEPS and, and the task force and, and Dan Dovecki have done a great job at really looking at this. The videos, you know, we're all visual, we're surgeons. The videos have been fantastic. You know, my concern is the people who haven't been to the meetings, who haven't seen the videos, who don't know what we now know, who are just saying fat injection to buttocks is either completely unsafe or completely safe when we know the answer lies in technique, as it does for so many things. Like when we were having deaths and necrotizing fasciitis when people were doing abdominal wall liposuction. Well, we figured out how not to perforate the colon and those problems went away. So I, I think this is gonna follow those lines, but I hate to see any procedure being, you know, we shouldn't do fat injection of the buttocks. I have a lot, I don't have many patients that want really big buttocks, but I have a lot of patients here who have really flat butts or fat butts with dents in them that can really be helped with contouring and to deny those patients that, it's really sad. Yeah, and it's certainly, Christine, yeah, having been at that meeting with you and Dan, you know, there was no short of interest on this procedure, right? I mean, there was a whole day basically devoted to 
buttock augmentation and fat and Del Vecchio was the star of the, of the day, you know, and, and but it was just incredible interest in the procedure in, in Russia, this meeting. Absolutely. And what was interesting is it seems like a very easy procedure. I think that's why it dupes people. They don't realize they have to go slow. They don't realize that they have to use the proper cannulas. They don't realize it's, it's technically more difficult than it appears. And I'm afraid when we're training lots of people at this meeting, like in Russia, they're going to go, oh, this is easy. I'm going to do this. And they don't really respect the anatomy, despite what Dan and everyone's been teaching them. Yeah. Jason, what, what, what's the vibe in Florida now? You know, there's been, a, I think, I think in the United States, right, that's been the area there's been the most deaths, I think. We, you know, listen, everyone here is a member of various societies. We've been inundated with information from our societies. So, you know, we're all getting safer. We've learned, and Dan works here in my office every once in a while, so I've learned directly from him. So we've learned what not to do, I guess, at this point and how to be safer. I'm just surprised that the Brits banned this rather than just took our recommendations and ran with them. That's a little strange to me. Yeah, and I think it's, it's actually, and I think it's it's basically a strong recommendation. So actually it's not a, a law or it's not, they didn't pass a law that you can't do this. They just made recommendations as a society to its membership that they thought that they should take a hiatus and not perform it until more was learned. And I think Dan, I'm going to give you the last word, but uh, I think maybe just more kind of research and education and becoming comfortable with some of the concepts maybe that we're more comfortable with here is, is probably what's in, in order for them. What do you think? Absolutely. I think, I don't think they want to make a decision based on our data. I think they want to, I think what will happen is I, I will personally invite them to do some work with, with the group that I've been working with, Rod, Title Bomb, Simeon Wall, and some of Rod's former resident. And I think that if we can do that, we'll, we'll probably, probably be like six months to a year before they change this. All right, well, that's some great insights. And, and Dan, when you finish that work, you'll at least get to tell the Brits, it's in the bin, man. <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, let's move on to the next one. We're going to talk about, this was a story, I, kind of, I thought it was caught my eye because there's been, I've seen, seen several of these things, talking about Giselle and just kind of out of the blue about she regretted from the first nanosecond that she had her implants of getting the implants. You know, Mindy, I'm going to start with you in this one. What, what's your take on this story? I, I just find the whole thing odd. Well, to be clear, I have not read Giselle's book. All I've read is just the article, the brief blurb. And so I'm not clear that she ever had the implants taken out. Uh, it, it, they're easy to take out. So if you were really that uncomfortable, just take them out. Right. It, it's you don't even have to go to sleep for that. I, I think that people need to be educated about sizes and whether you do that with imaging or you do that with sizers, people need to be. And do I ever get somebody who has the regrets? Very, very yeah. seldom but I tell them all, we can take them out. It's easy, I can do it in the office. So it, the whole thing is just odd to me because if she was uncomfortable for a year yet she didn't take them out, I, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I mean, it says, you know, Rich, like it said, she had this quote, it said, I felt like I was in, I was living in a body I didn't recognize. For the first year I wore baggy clothes because I felt uncomfortable. I felt angry and depressed, like I'd done something for myself to, to try to please others. Um, I don't know, you know, do, do you think, what do you think? I, I think, I think her book is an attempt to make her seem human. Yeah. Um, it almost, um, she seems to be trying to garner sympathy, but as Mindy says, you know, just take him out, which I don't believe she did. Yeah, so, so she, she can't be that unhappy with them. I, I think this is just much ado about nothing. There may be also some, you know, she's got a new book coming out, right? That needs the new book needs to be marketed, and maybe this is just something to get some, you know, breast implants. He always gets gets uh, people's attention, right? I mean, Christine, we see patients um, all the time, right? That have breast implants, and the studies and things have shown incredibly high quality of life and satisfaction after the procedure. So, I just think it's a little, it's a little bit off the beaten path. Certainly, it's not the normal response from people. Definitely. I mean, I think she's a little maybe guilty that she did something that she says is for other people, but being a supermodel is kind of caring about what other people think about you, right? <laughs> so it's basically, right. And she says when she nursed, one breast is larger than the other. I think maybe she just forgot what she looked like, the reason she had to go get the breast implants or wanted to get them. And I think she's just a little guilty about doing a procedure that's not maybe natural and she's really into a healthy lifestyle. But, you know, she looks better and I think she's happy now. 
A teacher gets breast implants. For her to have them taken out, it's like, I've just thrown away all this money. Right. We all know Giselle makes way more money than her husband. So financially, it was a drop in the bucket. It's the same as me buying my tab cola, take them, put them in, take them out, whatever. So, uh, you know, whether it's making an excuse for why her perfect body needed a little bit more, yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Sometimes these supermodels, I think they have a little bit of a distorted body image probably themselves, and that's not the normal person, and maybe that's part of some of this story. She just, you know, I mean, I think they, they, those, those people are probably obsessed about their body every day a lot more than most people. Yeah, I think, I think Christine was getting probably close to what I, I think is happening, which is if no one knew she had them, she probably wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> But, but then when everyone found out she had him, it was like, it's like telling your husband that the guy that you cheated on with the sex wasn't good. It's like conciliatory. <laughs> it's like conciliatory. Well, you know, they're not that great. But now it that wasn't everyone, good, but it wasn't any good. Right. I mean, I did it, but it wasn't good. So she did it, but it wasn't good. So but it makes her still more good. It, I kind of get that feeling that that's what it is. And I think Christine is right. There's a little guilt here. But if no one knew about it, it wouldn't be, she wouldn't say anything. Delbecca gets extra points for another, yet another analogy, Mr. Analogy. So Jason, I mean, you, you probably treated more supermodels than anybody here. What, uh, what, what's, what's your perspective? I think the story of Giselle loving her breast implants is a lot weaker than her hating her breast implants. So it's the only way to get some attention. So whatever, I agree with all you guys. She doesn't like them, take them out. She likes them, leave them out. Stop talking about it. <laughs> yeah, so I think probably a little all the above, but I think there's good insights. I mean, I think she's going to be fine either way. So, so those are some awesome insights. You guys are, are the best. Thanks again for your time. And then if you want to see more of this, you can see it on the plasticsurgerychannel.com.